Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. So we will be starting a new module in economy, monetary system in India. A very important module. Every year there, there will be questions from this particular module. Okay, so here we will be talk about what is money, what are the different types of money. We will also talk about you know different uh, M1, M2, M3, M4, all these concepts, narrow money, broad money, everything will be covered. We'll talk about Reserve Bank of India, the different monetary policies of Reserve Bank of India, contractionary policy, expansionary policy see all these things will be covered in this module so i'll be taking around four or five sessions and with that we'll complete this module okay so let's start with the session what do you mean by money uh, anything can be money if it is having a general acceptability as a means of payment so if you can me make a payment it is not necessarily currency or coins okay so anything which is having general acceptability can be understood as money so but it should be as a means of payment right now here what we're going to see first is I'll, I'll tell some functions of money then we'll look into the barter system and then we'll talk about different types of money okay the evolution of money we will discuss and then we will move to m1 m2 m3 m3 all these concepts okay so what are the functions of money so firstly it is a medium of exchange right so medium of exchange all the commodities are accepted or exchanged on the basis of money which is having a general you know purchasing power so money is having some purchasing power so it can be considered as medium of exchange second function common measure of values right common measure of value or basic unit of account See, in the previous system, when we talk about barter system, what was the problem? In barter system, there should be double coincidence of needs, right? Before money, there was a barter system. So that was also a kind of money only because you're exchanging something, okay, and buying something. So that exchanging item also have purchasing power and the transaction is also happening. You can consider it as a money, but that system is a barter system, right? You're exchanging something and you're getting some other thing but what is more important there is double coincidence of need is required sometimes you may need food okay and what you have will be uh, you may be a carpenter you will have a chair okay so if you need to get food the other person the farmer should also be in need of the chair if the farmer is not in not in the need of chair he may not give you the food right so double coincidence of need is required secondly when it comes to barter system the valuation valuation is also a problem so here you can see common measure of value if money is there otherwise how valuation will be a problem i may tell uh, for this particular pen i need to get uh, you know 10 chairs if you are a carpenter and you are in need of this pen or you are in need of some rice okay i'll tell that for one kilogram of rice i need 10 chair some other person will tell that uh, uh, one kilogram of uh, rice i need 100 chairs okay or some other person will tell that 100 table or 100 television it's like this there is no common measure but when money is there there is a common measure for values the table costs this much the chair costs this much the pen costs this much and the food costs this much everything can be understood on the basis of a common platform okay so money serves as a common measure that is one of the most important function of money apart from medium of exchange the next function is actually standard for deferred payments okay it is a standard for deferred payments the future monetary obligations can be or could be settled in terms of money so money act as a standard for deferred payments and finally store of wealth store of wealth so money is actually an asset now we will see types of money okay so we'll discuss different uh, types of money and here we will discuss the evolution of money also so we started off with barter system that is a commodity to commodity exchange system and then we have discussed about the problems with respect to that that is uh, the double coincidence of need is one problem and secondly valuation is another problem okay now here we are going to discuss about different other types of money starting from full bodied money the first one is full bodied money See, full bodied money for example gold coin uh, actually the value of money in this case will be equal to the value of that commodity okay so for example gold coin so this let's suppose there's a gold coin and if it is printed that let's say 100 or 1000 the 
the gold is worth thousand rupees okay that is what you mean by full bodied money because initially people didn't have trust in the governments and the kings okay all the setup so you need to have the value of commodity as the money okay so let me write here it is the money whose value as money is equivalent to its value as a commodity now one thing that you need to understand here is the value of money here is equivalent to the value of commodity so what do you mean by value of money here money the value of money means this what is printed in this that is the face value okay so the face value is what we call as the value of money value as commodity means what the metal for which uh, this is this is used okay the metal which is used here the value of the metal is what you mean by value of the commodity okay so that is what full bodied money next one is token money token money or it is also known as paper money paper money or also known as credit money okay so first we have seen commodity to commodity exchange that is a barter system we have seen the problems then full bodied money where the money value is actually equal to the value as commodity and value as commodity means it is a metal in which the money the face value is printed and the money value means the face value which is printed on the metal now the token money or paper money or the credit money so you can see here paper money or credit credit money from the here you can understand its value as money will be much more than the the commodity which is used to print the money right maybe the piece of paper is used but you can see 500 rupee or 100 rupee or 1000 rupee will be printed on the paper for example the currencies okay so all these are examples of token money that means value as a commodity which is much lesser than the face value or value as money value as money will be much more so here you can see value of money is equal to value of the commodity that means uh, both are same the gold coin is an example so here there will be a paper currency which is issued by RBI let's say RBI is issuing rupee 100 this paper piece might cost 50 paisa or 100 uh, 1 rupee but the value as money will be 100 so value as money will be much more than the commodity value as a commodity so let me write uh, one sentence here value as money is much more than value as commodity so i hope you understood what you mean by value as money value as money means this face value value as commodity means the paper in which it is printed so here also value as money means this face value value of commodity means the metal in which it is printed okay now the next one and now why it is known as credit money because it is a liability to rbi when you have this 100 rupee note rbi is uh, supposed to give you 100 rupee anytime the value of 100 rupee anytime right so it is a liability to government so it is a credit money okay so for example paper note paper note currency etc now next one is representative full bodied money representative full bodied money so here you can see uh, it is equivalent to full bodied money in one sense okay and it may be similar to token money in the other sense so it is actually a combination of the first and second one so here let's suppose uh, it, it's similar to token money in the sense that it is a let's suppose RBI is issuing rupee 100 okay so this is a piece of paper which is issued by RBI its money value value as money is 100 but this commodity is less than money value much less than money value but to issue this kind of money that is a representative full bodied money the equivalent amount of gold has to be kept with rbi okay the central bank that is what i mean by representative full bodied money so it is actually representing the amount of gold actually with rbi okay so why it is similar to second one that is token money because it is a piece of paper in which it is printed and the money, value of money is much more than value as commodity why it is similar to the first one full bodied money because gold is actually kept with the rbi okay so that is what you mean by representative full bodied money so let me write here it is a type of money which is issued 
which is issued against the backing of this one is convertible money so convertible money means uh, the money which can be converted into gold or silver at any point of time with the issuing authority so if you give this money let's say 100 rupees with you you go and give it to rbi you should be getting equivalent amount of gold or silver that is what you mean by convertible money we are no more convertible okay so we cannot convert money and uh, if you remember in one of our previous discussions we have discussed when we discussed about imf uh, Initially, from uh, during 1940s, from fr 40s onwards, we were following a uh, Bretton Woods exchange rate system. See, if you remember, till 91, we followed a fixed exchange rate system. Okay, so, till 91, fixed system is what we followed. And then 92, we have followed LERMS. That means partly fixed and partly, you know, market decided or flexible or floating. And from 93 onwards, we are going for floating exchange rate system but our floating exchange rate system is actually managed float that means rbi can interfere in the market rbi can create uh, you know supply or rbi can create demand also so rbi can interfere positively uh, to control you know appreciation of or depreciation of rupees so we call it as managed float okay or it is also known as dirty float because the central bank can interfere and it is not purely floating okay before that uh, uh, you know bretton wood system is what everybody everybody was following the members of imf that is every country's currency is connected with dollar and dollar is actually linked with gold that means it is freely convertible to gold but in 1970s us changed the policy that they have announced that no more dollar is convertible with gold then this uh, system break and different countries followed different exchange rate system and we followed fixed exchange rate systems okay so that discussion anyway we have already done so here convertible means it must be convertible in terms of gold or silver so it can be converted let me write down here it can be converted into gold or silver with the issuing authority now fifth one will be opposite of this that is inconvertible money okay so inconvertible money means it will not be you will not be able to convert money in terms of bullion you won't get gold dollar or uh, you know you won't get gold or silver okay you cannot convert the money that you have and rupee is inconvertible now and most of the countries nowadays is following this policy and most of the countries following token money so he, this is what most of the countries following even rbi is also following token money it is not the case that you need to keep complete amount of gold or equivalent amount of gold with rbi to print unlimited uh, to print the currency if that is a case deficit financing and all will not happen right we have discussed a lot about deficit financing and all in the previous sessions so i'm not talking about that here but uh, the problem with deficit financing also we have discussed right it, it actually it actually transfers resources from private sector to public sector only it is not creating any assets and that is the reason why deficit financing is not desirable it also create inflation in the system so we are uh, so okay inconvertible now that means rupee is not convertible also we have token money token money means rbi don't want to keep exactly same amount of gold with rbi when you are printing currency you just need to keep 200 uh, kilogram of gold and you can print unlimited you know uh, currency okay the unlimited money you can print so token money the advantage is that so inconvertible money it cannot be converted into bullion with the issuing authority so rupee is not convertible now okay okay now if you see evolution of money how this uh, evolution of money will be like this so first as i have discussed there will be a barter system that is a commodity to commodity exchange okay so commodity to commodity exchange system that is a barter system and then it 
came the full bodied money so then full bodied money so why initially full bodied money why not token money if you ask me it is because people didn't have trust in the king any time wars are there any time the governments any time the system is changing so people didn't have trust so they want to keep you know uh, the money in terms of commodity that means equivalent amount of gold has to be issued because the people's trust was not there the stability was not there in the government so let's say this is uh, so as i have discussed this is what followed right equivalent amount of you know uh, face face value and value as commodity should be equal and then what happened slowly king started reducing the size okay so initially let's suppose this is would be 100 okay so this much gold is used then they started using a small size coins okay so that you can save some gold people's trust st started growing slowly so you started reducing the size of the coin but still people had you know not complete trust on the government so what people do now you have two different types of coins this is having more gold and this is having less gold and this is having and both are having equivalent face value or uh, value as money is equal in both case but value as commodity will be more in case of the larger coin so you can use your common sense which money will be in circulation now you will try to circulate the the smaller coins right because value as commodity will be anyway less but money value is same so this is actually known as bad money because value as money is less than the value as commodity this is known as good money so what will happen there is a law called as Grisham's law okay so what is Grisham's law Grisham's law states that the bad money drives out uh, you know good money from the circulation okay so bad money drives out good money from circulation so i hope you understood the reason you have both coins with you 500 larger coin 500 smaller coin 500 smaller coin having a you know less value as commodity compared to 500 larger coin both having equal face value or value as money same in both case so you will be spending or you will be circulating this only and you will be keeping this as your asset so in circulation which will be there in circulation the small money will be there that is a bad money so from circulation bad money drives out good money good money you will keep with yourself so first commodity to commodity exchange then full bodied money then reduce the size then uh, what will be the next step in this evolution process representative full bodied money okay representative full bodied money you keep equivalent amount with the issuing authority in terms of bullion and you issue the currency and it should be convertible any point of time and then comes token money okay so then token money so this is how the evolution of money you can understand first commodity to commodity exchange that is a barter system then comes full bodied money then reduce the size it's similar to full bodied money but reduce the size but value as commodity will be slightly lesser than you know value of uh, money and value as money and then representative full bodied money the commodity will be the value as commodity will be much much lesser than value as money but equivalent amount of bullion will be with the issuing authority then token money in which equivalent amount is not required you need to keep some token amount okay uh, token uh, amount in terms of bullion with the issuing authority and you can print unlimited amount of currency so that is how the evolution of money now other type of money also we will quickly look into next is the next is fiat money okay so the sixth one fiat money so it actually serves as money because of the order of government but one thing that we need to know is the government sanction or the government order is not necessary for something to serve as money if i'm i'm ready to exchange something for something else okay mutual coincidence of want is what required that we have seen in case of barter system or the commodity to commodity exchange rate and the government sanction is not required in that case any anything can act as money it is just a medium of exchange okay but fiat money is the money which serves as you know money because of the sanction or the order of the government so it serves as money it serves as money on the order and that's why it is known as fiat order is fiat right fiat of the government see if you take the case of bitcoin there is no sanction from the government but it serves as money right 
so government sanction is not required it is just the mutual acceptance is what required if you're ready to exchange something for something else if it can act as a medium of exchange that is money government sanction is not required so that's why explicitly we need to talk about fiat money seventh legal tender money legal tender money so legal tender money it is actually compulsory to accept for any monetary obligation so somebody you are purchasing something or somebody uh, some payment you have to make in rupee you can make it in terms of rupee nobody can stop you making it in terms of rupee right so if you buy something and if you pay it in terms of rupee the other person compulsorily should accept that okay so it is compulsory compulsory to accept for settlement of monetary obligations now there are two types of legal tender money limited legal tender money the first one limited legal tender money that means it is compulsory to accept that money up to a particular limit for example 50 paisa coin you need to up you need to accept up to the payment of 10 rupee okay so for example 50 paisa you will have to accept till 10 rupee worth payments then unlimited legal tender money unlimited legal tender money so it is for unlimited payments okay so from one rupee and above you can make it for making unlimited amount of payments next is non-legal tender money non-legal tender money or it is also known as you know optional money you cannot call it as illegal it is optional money so it optional money non-legal tender money means it is opposite of legal tender money it is not compulsory to accept okay not compulsory to accept right some tokens which you get in some areas you go to uh, some shops or some parks you get some tokens or nepalese currencies in the borders all these are examples of non-legal tender money it is not there is no compulsion that you need to accept this as money bitcoin okay so cryptocurrencies are all example for this next is fiduciary money fiduciary money so it actually serves as money on the basis of people's trust okay the personal trust is important so serves as money on the basis of personal trust okay so if you have any doubt the what is non-legal tender money it is not just i am saying it is not compulsory like in terms of when you are making payments in terms of rupee it is compulsory to accept but here some vouchers you get some when you are doing some shopping you get some vouchers it is not necessary that some other person have to accept that voucher right but when you talk about uh, check and all that is different that is near money will come to that after this i'll be discussing about near money okay now if you see here six and seven both are almost same fiat money it serves as money on the order of the government of the sanction of government legal tender money also the same it uh, you need to compulsorily accept it okay to any monetary uh, you know obligation but which one is more broader this is more broader seventh legal tender money is more broader because government is saying you have to compulsorily accept it as a uh, you know uh, payment of uh, settlement of monetary obligation so next we'll go for near money so it is actually uh, near money means the most liquid assets okay so highly liquid financial assets as i have just before told you check check is an example shares okay bonds draft etc so what do you mean by liquidity liquidity means the ease of convertibility in terms of rupee okay in, into money so you can easily convert into money that is what you mean by liquid so these items are most liquid you give a check you give a check to the in the bank you'll get the money shares bonds etc you can sell anytime okay so it is most liquid financial assets gold is also liquid i'm not talking about gold because i'm talking about financial assets okay so next we will go for plastic money 
plastic money means all these debit cards credit cards etc it is not that the money which is printed in a plastic okay so debit credit cards etc next is deposit money deposit money is the money which is uh, you know invested or deposited in the banks or financial institution it is also known as secondary money secondary money so the money invested or deposited in banks or fis money deposited in banks or financial institutions so we talked about uh, all the different types of money we started off with functions of money okay so i have told you already functions medium of exchange common measure of value standard for deferred payment store of wealth and full bodied money means equivalent you know the va value as money will be equal to value as commodity so that is the first one token money value as money will be more than value as commodity representative full bodied money okay value value as money will be much more than value as commodity but equivalent amount of bullion has to be kept with the issuing authority convertible money you can convert it with the bullion any time inconvertible you cannot convert and then we have discussed about evolution of money we have started off with barter system that is a commodity to commodity exchange and then we moved on to full bodied money because pe because people didn't had enough trust on the uh, issuing authorities and then king started reducing the size and then what happens is the grisham slow we have discussed the bad money drives out full money because the good money the good money is having much more value as a commodity and then we have seen uh, after that representative full bodied money keeping equivalent amount of gold with the issuing authority and finally token money when the people's trust is actually improved on the financial institutions we have also talked about fiat money it serves as money on the order of the government legal tender tender money it must be accepted as the method for you know payment for you know all the monetary obligations and limited legal tender money up to certain limit it is compulsory to accept unlimited means any any there is no limit you need to accept this money as any monetary obligations okay up from 1 rupee onwards it is unlimited non legal tender money it is optional money it is not compulsory to accept as i have discussed vouchers bitcoins all these are examples then uh, fiduciary money serves as money on the basis of personal trust near money highly liquid financial assets check draft all these are example financial assets is what i am talking about plastic money atm cards okay debit cards credit cards etc deposit money the money deposited in the bank accounts and financial institutions okay so it is also known as secondary money so that's about uh, you know different types of money next session we'll talk about uh, uh, different types of accounts bank accounts okay and then we'll also talk about post office accounts and then we'll move on to different concepts of money m1 m2 m3 all those things we'll discuss which is very important for your prelims so if you have any doubt uh, you can get in touch with me here this is my instagram id you can join the telegram channel for all the videos so see you guys